should we as the human race have built the Las Vegas sphere? Costing over $2 billion to build, a reported $100 million lost in the first quarter, and the CFO mysteriously resigning, I can't help but wonder, is this all just one big mistake? So here's the plan. Me and Nathan are flying down to Vegas to get on the ground and get first-hand experience with the sphere. But we're not going just to the sphere, no, no, no. I've never been more than about one and a half feet off the ground because of the thing we all know and love, gravity, and I'm terrified of heights, and that just won't do. But even more important than overcoming my lifelong fear, I need to try Las Vegas pizza. You see, growing up, I used to collect all different types of pizza boxes, and it was my pride and joy until one day, everything changed. With my suitcases packed and all my stuff stored away, there was no space to keep my precious collection. With my life's work in the trash, so were my hopes and dreams, but I'll never forget the legend of Giovanni Fortuna. Long ago, when Las Vegas was just beginning to shimmer in the desert, an Italian chef named Giovanni Fortuna opened up a small pizzeria. After nights of labor, Giovanni created a masterpiece, the perfect slice. As the years went by, the legend faded away and no one knows where to find the legendary pizzeria. Now you may be wondering, Samuel, how are you going to overcome your fear of heights? Where is the pizzeria? Why are you dressed as a bird? You see the sphere is 260 feet tall and 516 feet wide. Now don't worry, your tiny brain probably can't compute such large numbers, so I'll make it easy for you. The sphere is three blue whales tall and five blue whales long. The outside of the sphere is made of 1.2 million RGB pucks that kind of act like the pixels of a TV. You've probably seen clips like these from when the sphere was first announced but the inside of the sphere is a concert venue with 17,000 different seats surrounded by massive screens around the perimeter, creating a concert experience that no one has ever been able to experience before. Anyway, my plane's leaving in like an hour, so I gotta go. The first of our three goals were rapidly approaching and I was beginning to feel confident. I even got this cool shot of me walking through the airport. Mwah. Who even needs to go to college for cinematography when you have raw talent like this? As we explored further in, we came across a bunch of little shops and I could not believe how expensive everything was. Like, look at this. Are you joking? $6.29 for a single Pringles can? They did slightly redeem themselves with these alien doing split squat socks. Wow, say that 10 times fast. But that still does not justify the price at all for one can of Pringles. As we left the store, we found a framed picture of the sphere and you can just tell how magnificent it is and seeing it in person is going to be a whole different level. After getting to our gate, we just watched planes landing in nervous anticipation. Soon enough, it was our turn to board the plane, and we sat there for like an hour, so I decided to do a little research. I'd heard good things about Boeing, so I was hoping we'd get one of their planes, but no luck. We got some underground plane company called Airbus. And look at this, their doors don't even open by themselves. What a joke. And then I saw him, the lone man solely responsible for our safe departure, hitting the gritty, so I knew we were in safe hands. We ended up in a line of like five different planes all taking off at the same time, so I just got to watch plane after plane taking off, which was not great for my nerves. It was finally our turn to fly, and I'm just going to let the clip play because I think it speaks for itself. With that, our first objective was completed and I hadn't even passed out. And people say miracles don't happen. Nathan's an experienced flyer, so he wasn't faced in the slightest, but I was low key freaking out and I know you're all asking for it, so feel free to use this as your PC background, phone screen, you name it. Even flying, time after time, I was reminded of the severe from spherical clouds to alien landing sites. There was truly no escaping for it. But before we move on, can we talk about how crazy flying is? We're going at a couple hundred miles an hour, 40,000 feet up in the air. And look at this shot I got. All of a sudden, I feel like an Instagram celebrity. It was also low-key dystopian because halfway through the flight, they had a giveaway where one person had a sticker on their tray table. Needless to say, we did not win it because I'd already used up all of my luck in second grade by winning a raffle and getting a iPod shuffle, which my parents immediately took away from me but I'm not bitter, why would you say that? It was a short flight without any free snacks, which I was upset about, but soon we started our descent and it was much scarier than taking off. Once you hit the ground, these things pop up to slow you down and it was definitely the loudest part of the flight. And we walked off safely and just like that, we were in Vegas. I thought Nathan was trying to take a picture here, so that's awkward. 
but I'd never been in a building this huge before. And we were just in one of the many sections. We were both starving, so we ordered an Uber from the airport to the nearest McDonald's and went ham. While we're chowing down, let's go over the plan. First, we need to go to the Sphere. We want to get some first impressions in the daylight. Second, we need to check into our hotel. We found one of the cheapest and lowest rated hotels in all of Vegas, and it just so happens to be just a few blocks from the Sphere. And in the spirit of Ryan Trahan, we're not leaving until we can leave a five-star review. And by the reviews we found, that's going to be really hard to do. Third, we need to find Giofani Fortuna's legendary pizza. I can't talk about it right now, but I have a lead on to where it might be. And fourth, eat the pizza while we're watching the sphere. But before all that, while we were walking out of the McDonald's, I learned something new. Birds in cities are crazy. They have no fear. I swear, I could have picked up one of these with my bare hands and it would have been like, what's up? I have spent approximately 0% of my life in big cities like this, so this probably could happen everywhere, but I was low-key freaking out. As we were walking away, Nathan pulls out his phone and holds it up and says, selfie. Me, being the sheep I am, saw Nathan's peace sign and thought, oh, I should do something with my hands too. But in the half second I had before he took the photo, I panicked and did this. If we were playing checkers, I would have done the same thing, but I'm playing chess. Riding from Mickey D's to the Sphere was about a 30 minute walk and I was excited to take in all of the sights. We saw the giant Ferris wheel, which by the way was super expensive, it was like 60 bucks for one person, so that was insane. Some palm trees, a recreation of Walmaria, somehow we ended up in a casino and we popped out only a single block away from a road that would have led us directly to the Sphere but we got turned away from by some cops because the road was closed. And this detour caused us to meet our new best friends. We'll call them Jake and Frederick. They became our new traveling companions as they were going to see the sphere too. And they even stopped to get this photo with this inspirational trash can. Rounding this corner, we finally got our first close up look at the sphere and just look at the shock on this man's face. Up close, the sphere was even bigger than I thought it was gonna be. So we took some selfies, said goodbye to our new friends, and went scouting for a place to come back tonight. Being in the presence of something so majestic and grand made me feel the need to say something to capture its beauty. That's crazy. With the area scouted out, it was time to head to the hotel to do some digging as to why it's a two-star hotel. There were sidewalk close signs everywhere, but with no one to stop us, we pressed on, and after just a few blocks away, we found our hotel. After waiting in line for no joke an hour, we finally checked in, and our room number was 2020. Nothing says relaxing stay in Vegas like the global pandemic. We went online to try to find one of the cheapest places we could stay in Vegas, and we found the Ellis Island Hotel. It's about $30 a night, but the best part about it is that it's air conditioned in the 100 plus degree weather that we've been walking around in the past few hours. So we're grateful for anything they give us. This hotel was it's a two star hotel because of these reviews that I found. Avib said, their Wi-Fi is a pain. You cannot just log in to the network. You have to kill a dragon first, never again. <laughs> I haven't seen any dragons around, but network is a very important to me, so we're gonna have to figure that out. Benjamin says, ha 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 ha, this place is a joke, stay away. We booked ahead of time and they turned us away because one person in the party was 20. It's pretty common around here to have to be 21 for you to be able to check into a hotel because of all the casinos and bars. I don't think I'm gonna look into this one because I myself am not 21. So we're gonna ignore that one and pretend like I just slipped in. Lisa said, old motel, disgusting room that was unmade with blood in the bathtub and cigarette buds in the key sink. Looks like a motel from a horror movie. I haven't seen any blood around here, but I don't know, maybe it's in the bathtub. Like they said. Heel said, rude staff. Smells like bad chemicals everywhere. Giant 5G tower in the parking lot. We'll definitely be checking that out. And this one's pretty bad too. Stephanie says, the worst experience. Water stinks. Rooms are sticky. Staff was unkind from the front desk to security and restaurant. And here's where it gets really weird. Also, the owner's daughter likes to flex her muscles to bully people she doesn't like the look of. <laughs> I will be looking around for people flexing at other people. First impressions, not bad. It's pretty clean, at least on the surface. We'll see once we dig a little bit deeper. Now, I'm a little nervous for this one. I haven't signed on to the Wi-Fi yet, and the review said that I'd have to kill a dragon first. So when we checked in, they gave us this little pamphlet and they specified that the Wi-Fi password is in here. So I'm very interested to see if we just get right on. Hmm. That's kind of sus. So my phone's only reading a few different Wi-Fi signals, uh, but one of them is named Ellis Island Hotel, but there's no password on it. So it looks like we just got right in. <laughs> it's just nothing. 
<laughs> With Avib's review proving to be true, I started to get a little worried that Lisa might be right and there's going to be blood in the bathroom. Come in. Remarkable lack of blood. Finding the clean tub is a huge relief, but before I search any more, I need to check to see if we have been blessed with a Sphere View hotel room. <sighs> no luck, just a parking lot and a swimming pool, which reminds me, we need to check Stephanie's claims of stinky water. Fortunately for us, just outside our room, there is an ice maker, so we filled up our McDonald's cup full of ice. I am quite excited to see if the water stinks like they say it does. Good. Probably read the water two out of five. With that crushing defeat, I was quickly running out of positive things to say. If I was going to write a true five star review, I was going to have to act fast. Desperate to prove another one of the reviews wrong, I ran to my bed and threw off the sheets and found nothing gross. Perhaps I need to look for something sticky. I searched high and low on a bunch of different services, but after searching my whole room for hidden messes and finding none, it's time to get down to business. We've already proved the first half of Stephanie's review wrong, so I made it my mission to prove the rest of it wrong. We looked everywhere but didn't see a single soul. Eventually we did see this guy in this dapper hat. I suspect his name is Gerald but based on his calm walk he had not been flexed on recently so I think this review is officially busted. I don't see any 5G towers out here but maybe that's what they're talking about. Hey, look at this as we explored further into the hotel, I began to think on Lisa's review. Lisa said there would be blood in the bathroom and that the hallways looked like they were from a horror movie. And it's hard to explain, but there was something a little unsettling about these hallways. It was as if there was something following me. My fears were confirmed when we went up to the top floor and found it was blistering hot. Upon closer inspection, we discovered the AC had been turned off in a hundred degree weather. This could only be the work of the dead, so I think this review is confirmed. We didn't see a single other person walking around the hotel, but when we did check in, the front staff were very nice. They even complimented us on doing the pre-check-in very well. So Heal, I don't know what you did, but your review is half true. After searching for half an hour and no signs of a dragon guardian, we defeatedly headed back to our room, but ran into the vending machines. Buying a $3 water bottle with a $5 bill, you might think we should get $2 back, right? Wrong. This isn't just any normal vending machines. This is the dragon from the review that we had to defeat. But unprepared and defeated, we walked away after losing $2. Now all there is to do is to wait for nightfall. There was two things going through my mind right now. Las Vegas pizza and the sphere. And soon enough, it was time. Before it got dark, we needed to find the fabled pizza. We did get a little distracted by the sun setting on this building by the strip. But what if I told you the pizzeria is within this very frame? Now I know what you're thinking. Samuel, how are you so tall? And surely you're not thinking of 7-Eleven, right? Well, hold on, let me explain. With only the clues in the actual legend itself to find the pizzeria, here's where it gets interesting. If you count the characters in Giovanni's name, it following comes out the process seven, in the, the legend number now, seven, stay with me, take the seven, seven characters from the legend, the put them together, and boom, 7 Eleven. Having acquired the pizza, all that was left to do was to go to the sphere and ask the question Is the Las Vegas sphere a mistake? As the sun went down and we got closer, it started to hit me just how insane the sphere truly is. As I said before, in the first operating quarter, the sphere lost about $100 million and the CFO quit. But things aren't as black and white as they seem. There are reports that the CFO quit because he was done dealing with the sphere's owner, James Dolan's temper tantrums, who despite being a billionaire apparently acts like a child. As for losing $100 million, the sphere opened September 29th and the quarter ended September 30th. So that $100 million was likely spent on hiring on new staff, advertising, and the grand opening of the sphere. As for generating revenue, they frequently sell out as a billboard to companies such as Fortnite and Sony for the whole Las Vegas skyline to see. As of about a month ago, the Eagles moved in to take up a residency for the next three months where they'll be consistently performing concerts that will sell many tickets. And the UFC is holding fights there, which apparently Jake Paul snuck into even though he's been banned. Going into this, I wasn't expecting to be amazed by the sphere. I mean, we're standing in a parking lot, sirens are going, but eating Las Vegas pizza in front of something that took thousands of people's hard work and dedication, billions of dollars to build, it struck me on how amazing it was. But the question still stands, 
Was building the sphere a mistake? Long term, I think the sphere will be profitable. So economically, for those who built it, yes, it probably was worth it. What about environmentally? There's been reports of a huge increase of light pollution. One effect of this has been a huge distraction for drivers for miles around. And there's not been a single report on how much it takes to power the sphere. I think that the sphere is a testament to human ingenuity, and it left me inspired to see what kind of boundaries I could break. But ultimately, I think everyone has to decide for themselves if the sphere was a mistake or not. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Kind of give me a headache. Me and Nathan were in Vegas for less than 22 hours for this trip, and both of us were sick. Needless to say, this is a trip I will never forget.